I'm Stephen Fowkes. I'm uh, a blogger on projectwellbeing.com, and I'm here today at the Bulletproof Conference talking about Bulletproof Brain, how the brain depends upon uh, ex lots and lots and lots of energy, and that when the energy systems of the body brown out, the brain suffers. In my opinion, um, Alzheimer's disease is the result of a brownout of body energy systems. And that, so the solution is just to turn that around, raise the body's energy systems back up, and then the Alzheimer's just goes away spontaneously. And I've done this in four out of five people I've attempted to do it with. So it's very reliable, very simple. There is an art to figuring out where the metabolic bottleneck is in a particular person. In one case, a 93-year-old woman who took three supplements and in 30 days she was not only dressing herself, going to the bathroom unassisted and talking with her family members, but she started paying her bills spontaneously. And that was 30 days on three supplements. Pregnenolone, which is a steroid precursor for the, for the uh, not only the sex steroids but the corticosteroids and mineral corticoids. It was a broad spectrum multivitamin with mineral that has about 10 times the RDA of the B complex. And the third thing was coconut oil, three to four tablespoons a day. My grandfather developed Alzheimer's disease when I was in college. And so that, um, that affected me. It, it gave me, in a sense, a uh, meta level mission in life to you know, try to figure out where Alzheimer's disease came from. And so uh, my co-authors and I put a chapter in our Smart Drugs 2 book about Alzheimer's treatment but that was really the kitchen sink approach because we didn't really understand the mechanism. But in 2000 and, in 2000 and 2001, a group of dental researchers figured out what the connection was in terms of the glutathione-mercury ratio and were able to induce Alzheimer's disease and reverse it and induce it and reverse it in a marine snail neuron um, you know, as many times as they wanted. And when that was put into practice, lo and behold, Alzheimer's disease reversed. It wasn't Alzheimer's researchers, it was dentists investigating the focal toxicity of mercury. And they found out that there's a particular way in which the body's mercury detoxification mechanism reverses. And so the mercury that is safely contained becomes toxic when the mercury's detoxification mechanism fails. And this isn't, so it's not about mercury exposure, it's about our successful or non-successful adaptation to the mercury that we all carry with us. If you have mercury fillings and Alzheimer's disease, you, I would actually recommend against having them removed because the act of removing them dramatically exposes you to more mercury and it's better to instead go after the mercury detoxification systems and raise your metabolic rate so that your body's handling the mercury and then once your problems have, have been balanced properly, then you take out the mercury fillings in your mouth. I would absolutely refuse. There's no reason to put mercury in in anybody's mouth nowadays with the, uh, the advances in the technology of composites. Um, I mean, in, you know, 20 years ago, composites had a lot of problems. You know, they might shrink, for example, too much and leave cracks and that would cause more infection. But m amalgam uh, fillings, the, the, the power that they had in terms of being cheap and um, uh, effective, they always filled the hole and, um, you know, nicely. Um, that's now duplicated in composite technology, so there's no reason to use mercury. Okay. I made barometers as a kid and did atmospheric te tests. I, I used to take a dime and dip it in mercury and coat it and carry it around in my pocket. So I was exposed to all kinds of mercury levels as a kid. And that's not smart. Don't do this at home, kids. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is everywhere and um, it's in everything. And so the question is, does your food have five parts per million or 15 parts per million or whatever. So it's a, it's a level of, of risk that, in my opinion, isn't so much about the exposure, it's about how the mercury is handled by your body. So if you see, you get your hair tested and you're seeing mercury in your hair, that's on one level a very good sign because it means your body's getting rid of the mercury, okay? And on the other hand, you have somebody who's got mercury in their body, but it's not showing up in the hair and it's not showing up in the blood. It means that their tissues have lost the ability to get rid of it, and it's building up and causing problems. And that, there's, there's actually a disease called idiopathic cardiomyopathy where teenagers, their heart 
loses the ability to get rid of mercury, and the mercury level just builds up and up and up and up and up until suddenly they drop dead. And there's no sign of mercury in their muscles. There's no sign of mercury in their liver, in their, in their skin. It's just their heart that accumulates the mercury. And nobody knows exactly why this happens, but it just, what it demonstrates is that we have on some level in a state of health, a very high adaptive capacity towards mercury. There was one young man who died at 17 years of age who had approaching a tenth of 1% mercury in his heart. Wet weight, a tenth of 1%. That's a thousand times what anybody would normally survive. But because he was 17 years old, a male teenager, he had glutathione capacity that was immense. His body was able to detox the mercury until it reached that massive level and then suddenly he dropped dead. So restoring that mercury detoxification mechanism is best. Project Wellbeing, all one word, dot com, and uh, CERI dot com has information about smart drugs, uh, but it doesn't, it, it, it only touches upon the mechanism of mercury toxicity in Alzheimer's disease. It doesn't actually talk about, you know, putting coconut oil into your food or taking supplements. It's, it's not a, uh, uh, it's not oriented towards therapy, whereas the Project Wellbeing goes into that issue of therapy and, and you know, like if you're going to take, do 10 things in your life, what would they be? You're welcome. Fun.